uh, video tutorial. Uh, in this particular video tutorial, I'm hoping to show you guys how to use the track emotion analysis system just to get you guys uh, a little bit more familiar with it and comfortable with it. Um, so this is what your track uh, application should look like. So um, if you have it installed on your computer or your laptop, just double click it to open it up. And then once it's up and running, we'll load the video. So I'm just going to maximize the screen here. Go to File, Open File, go to wherever your video is saved and then just double click on it. It might prompt you uh, with this particular message, don't worry about it, it just uses its own video engine to run your video. So just click on the Zuggle option um, and it should load it no problem. So this is typically what your interface looks like. So with any video analysis, this is a really ad hoc one, so I'm just keeping it really simple here where I'm just going to be throwing a ball. But with any video analysis, you should have a reference object um, always visible in the frame and it should be in the plane of motion in which the video takes place. Um, so how do we start just configuring our setup? So the computer doesn't really know what it's looking at and what the dimensions are of your particular analysis. So we're going to kind of give it something to orientate itself. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click on this um, calibration tool option, click on new and click on calibration stick and that comes up with this blue icon. And what we're going to do here is click on one of the crosshairs and we're going to line it up with the top of our calibration object. So uh, the kind of horizontal bar of the crosshair should be at the very top um, of that object. And then same thing, the horizontal crossbar of the uh, second crosshair should be at the very bottom of your object and you try and line it up as accurately as possible. You can even press um, the scroll bar on your mouse that's going to zoom in or you can click up here and uh, zoom into a specific uh, percentage. So uh, that's not much, I'm just going to keep scrolling and just uh, get a better indication of where the top of this object is. So it looks like it's there. I'm going to go down and do the same thing so that looks pretty good. It's flush with the floor. I'm going to zoom back out again. Okay, uh, it then asks you what are you measuring in, so this would maybe be 100 uh, centimeters, I want my units in meters, and the actual length of the stick is 120 centimeters or 1.2 meters, so I want all my units in meters, so I'm just going to give it uh, and say relative to my measurement, that's 1.2 meters, and just press enter. Okay, then we can get rid of that, uh, I don't want to see it all the time, uh, but now that at least is calibrated. Over here on the um, play menu, I'm going to play the video until the point where I actually release the ball. I'm going to pause it there. So it's getting pretty close. Um, what I'm going to do here is you have options to play frame by frame. I'm just going to click it until the ball is left my hand and definitely in the air, which is over there. So I'm going to right click at the bottom. I'm going to set this to my starting frame for my analysis. And what you'll notice is this. Uh, little black triangle now moves to there. I'm going to go click frame by frame until the ball is just about uh, to, le uh, to hit the ground and you'll see that it's just about there. I'm now going to set that as my end frame. So you'll notice now if I place uh, this button over here to take me to the first step, it's not going to replay the whole video, it's only going to take me to the area that I'm interested in analyzing. Okay, now I've got to tell the computer what it is that I want to analyze. So I'm going to create a new point mass. All right. Uh, I'm going to right click on there and give it a new name because this is a hockey ball. Press enter. And that's just configured it to a hockey ball. So if I want to give it a specific mass, if I know what the mass is of the hockey ball, it's not going to really feature or be important for us at this point in time, but we can put the um, mass of the ball in there. It might feature for other types of analyses. Okay, uh, then I have to set um, the origin reference frame for my analysis. If I press this cross uh, bar button, it kind of centers it in the middle of your video. Um, what I'm going to do is going to click on the bottom. And <coughs> since I'm measuring relative to the floor, I'm going to put this at the very bottom uh, in terms of my horizontal axis. And then my vertical axis, I'm going to try and line up with the middle or the center of the ball. That's where I want my analysis to start. So any values that I get are going to be given relative to this starting point. Uh, you can see here it's not quite lined up um, flush with the floor, so if I just click on here I can kind of just 
uh, change the orientation of the axis, the tilt. And I'm going to try and get it as flush as possible. That looks fairly good. Okay. Um, once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to move this up a little bit more. There we go. Once I'm happy with that, um, I'm going to then press the horizontal uh, coordinate axis option again. And it's going to disappear because now it's configured everything relative to that. Okay. Um, now I want to track the motion of this particular object. So in order to do that, I'm going to show you the long way and then the quick way to do it. Uh, long way, if you're not familiar with the system, uh, is going to be easier um, because you might not necessarily be aware of how to edit things when the automatic way goes wrong. So what you'll do is you press your shift button. Um, sorry, I've got to click on the ball, then press the shift button and you'll see now my mouse pointer has changed to a crosshair. And I'm going to try and align the crosshairs with the center of the ball as much as possible. Once I'm happy with it, I'm going to press click. And what it does then is it automatically moves to the next frame. And then I just repeat this process. I'm not going to be 100% accurate here because I'm trying to move uh, through this video tutorial relatively quickly. And I'm just going to keep doing that as best I can. And you'll notice it'll take a couple of frames. Um, before this analysis will be complete. So also a really important uh, aspect in your video analysis is you want quite a big contrast between the actual object itself and the background. So you'll notice I've got uh, quite a white background um, which contrasts relatively well with the uh, object that I'm using. Um, it just makes it really a lot easier to spot and makes your analysis therefore a lot uh, more accurate. So that's my last frame. So I'm happy with that. What you'll notice here is um, it has now plotted that data um, as I've tracked its, its motion. Um, on the traditional x-axis I've got time and the traditional y-axis, I've got my horizontal displacement. So you can see here, it's uh, it's a definitely increasing slope. What I want to try and do now is utilize this uh, and analyze it a little bit more. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll right click here and I'll press the analyze button and it's going to open a new um, display for me over here. In order to analyze this, I'm going to press the analyze uh, tab and then press curve fits. And you can see it's a it's a straight line. There's different types of um, curve fitting options that I have here. I'm just going to use a straight line fit. And here's my regular uh, straight line equation uh, relative to the units that I'm using. Okay, so since I'm analyzing the horizontal motion relative to time, I'm interested in finding these A and B parameters. And here are the values that are given. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, write this equation out and utilize these numbers uh, in that equation. So what I want you guys to do is open a Word document and in here I'm going to type out the equation. So go insert equations um, and then I just say x is equal to a t plus b. That's the standard equation. Um, remember that this is going to be indicative of your uniformly accelerated um, motion equations. So what I'll do is I'll write that out as well. Since my interest is in position um, and how the position is changing relative to time, so I'm interested in my uh, horizontal position um, at some point in time later, the final um, horizontal position is equal to the horizontal velocity multiplied by time plus whatever my uh, initial um, position was. So I just want to make sure it's part of that still and I'm just going to change that unit there. So this is my uniformly accelerated motion equivalent of a normal straight line graph. You can see that V of X is indicative of A and XI is indicative of the B value. What I'm going to try and do now is just copy that again and I'll paste it below and what I'm going to do now is whatever my A and B values are in this sheet I'm going to just put those values in. So this is 1.775. 
1.775 times time and the constant at the end here is 0 0.0166 0 0.0166 so in essence what this is saying is relative to my coordinate axis where I started from the center of the ball was 0 0.0166 uh, meters or um, in essence one centimeter off relative to that um, horizontal axis it's also telling me that my initial um, velocity in the x direction is 1.775 and that that is constant it's in essence it's remaining that value throughout the motion which is kind of something that we expect to see but we'll get to that in a second um, just to prove it the other thing that I want you guys to do is to um, snap snapshot this picture so you're gonna right click press snapshot it's gonna create this display go to edit and copy it go to your word document um, which is over here and I want you guys to paste it uh, in there okay you just press control V to get that um, remember this is now an unedited document so I still need you guys to put the title and make sure that you label your X and your your, your, um, your Y and your traditional X axes with the correct units as well so this would be um, horizontal displacement and that's measured in meters time is measured in seconds okay and this is the equation for that straight line all right um, I'm gonna close this so long and then just go back to uh, the video now I want to investigate the, the vertical motion so you can see here it's a nice parabolic shape which we typically expect to see for projectile motion uh, again I'm going to analyze uh, this motion specifically um, it's going to now display both graphs on the same or, or both bits of information on the same graph so over here I'm just going to unclick uh, the X component of it so it's only going to give me the Y component alright so it's still trying to fit a straight line obviously that's not going to be a good fit so in here I want to fit a parabolic curve and you can see that that fits it really nicely the equation for a parabola is y is equal to at squared plus bt plus c again my a b and c parameters are given over here quite nicely uh, and again what I want to try and do is to write this equation out okay so I go back to my word document uh, I'm going to insert the equation for a normal parabola y is equal to a uh, x squared so just to get your superscripts click in here ax squared plus bx plus c uh, I'm going to copy that because now I want to write the uh, uniformly accelerated motion equation equivalent of this so my y position is in essence um, my vertical position uh, initially so again I'm just going to uh, go to the design I want to just change that that it's my final Y position that I'm interested in is equal to um, just change that one half um, a and since we're talking about vertical acceleration it's a Y times t squared plus v naught or initial uh, velocity in the y direction times time plus whatever my initial y position was alright so some things that we would expect here is uh, whatever my one half a y is uh, given in this equation um, please don't get confused with this a over here and this a over here they represent entirely different things okay that's why knowing your physics equations is really really important um, I'm just going to now rewrite this with the parameters that I was given over here in terms of a B and C so negative 4.801 so this is negative 
this is 3.642, 3.642, and my initial Y position was 1.506, 1.506. So in essence, this is telling me what we know from physics is that one half, uh, the gravitational acceleration should be 9.81, and half of that should give me 4.905. Um, acceleration is down and we've configured our axes to indicate that um, downwards motion is negative um, and you can see here that our one half a y is giving us negative 4.801 which is really close to the negative 4.91 uh, that we expect to see it's also telling that my initial velocity in the y direction is 3.642 uh, meters per second and that my initial release height is 1.506 meters above the ground so some really useful information that I'm getting from here already. Again, I'm going to snapshot this. I'm going to um, copy it. And I'm going to paste it in here. Again, remember I have to label all of this stuff, eh? Okay. Uh, now the other thing that I need you guys to analyze as we just close that, go back to our video is to analyze the uh, vx and vy graph. So this is now uh, the uh, velocity in the horizontal direction. It looks incredibly noisy, like it's going up and down all the time. But notice it's over a very, very narrow span. Okay, so I'm going to adjust the size of that axis. I'm going to drag it down. So notice that uh, as I drag the mouse um, over to the vertical axis, once I see that upwards arrow I can just click and hold it and drag I can just do the same with the bottom and um, what I'm just doing is reshaping uh, the axes and what you'll see is it's, it's, it's fairly constant and that's kind of what we expect to see right in the absence of air resistance which we know is not really happening here there is not uh, I'm not throwing this object in a vacuum and it was quite a windy day but it is fairly constant so if I wanted to analyze this which I'm not expecting you guys to do right now um, or which I'm not going to go right to do right now. I'm just showing you guys how to reshape certain things. Um, if again I just reshape this in terms of what I did just now, you will find that the slope of this line is really, really small. Um, sorry, I'm still trying to uh, fit a parabola, so here I'm fitting a straight line. So you'll see that the slope of the line. Uh, is negative nine point uh, zero zero eight point nine six, uh, so it's 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 re it's ex it's experiencing some deceleration, but it's very very slight, very very negligible. Um, in other words, it's it's horizontal uh, velocity is kind of staying at one point eight two five meters per second. Okay. Um, the last one I want you guys to analyze is your vertical velocity. Um, I'm going to again analyze this. I'm not looking for the horizontal velocity anymore. I'm just looking at this. Um, so again, we can just reshift the axes over here. Uh, and you see that this line is not really fitting very well. So let me just see what's going on here. All right. Just reshaping, trying to get all this data in here. There we go. That's it. So what I'm going to do is click the crosshair and drag over the areas that I want to analyze. Okay, so I don't want to get that into my sample. Again, it's a straight line fit. It's saying that the vertical velocity is equal to some... Uh, value times time plus uh, a constant and here again my values are given um, so when I go back to my data sheet if you guys remember your uniformly accelerated motion equations the one for um, vertical velocity s uh, says that my final vertical velocity in the y direction is equal to um, my initial vertical velocity in the y direction plus oops 
plus uh, acceleration in the y direction times time. Okay. Um, again, notice that how this for follows a straight line formula. Uh, if I equate this to the equation that I'm given, uh, it says that that's equal to b, and then that's equal to the a parameter in my uh, analysis tab over here. A and B, so I'm just going to put these values in. So B, it says, is equal to 3.798, 3.798, and the A value is negative 9.871, negative 9.871 times time. So again, notice that my acceleration in the y direction, which is the gravitational value, we know from um, the textbooks that we read should be 9.81, um, or more specifically negative 9.81, and our measured parameter is negative 9.71. So we're not far off at, uh, at all here. And this is with really basic equipment. I mean, it's a standard video camera measured from a phone recording at 30 frames per second, and we're getting some really decent data out of it. Again, don't forget to um, snapshot that, copy it, and paste it in your document. Let's press Control V. Okay, um, just to prove it again, what we're going to do one last time is just to look at the acceleration in the y direction. Uh, again, it'll look fairly noisy, but what you'll notice once I've kind of reshifted these values over here uh, is it stays fairly constant here around this negative uh, 10. We said negative 9.871, um, which is a fairly good estimation of it. Um, okay, so I think that concludes the video. I think you guys should be um, comfortable with what you guys need to do at this point in time. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you guys how to do the the quicker way. So if I just press the backtrack here. So instead of manually click clicking through, what I'm going to do is press this button over here, which is an auto tracker, right? Uh, the auto tracker prompt says that I need to press Control Shift, and what you'll realize there is if I press Control Shift, now my mouse pointer t turns into a circle. Um, press it over the ball or slightly off the ball so that it can contrast the motion of the object relative to the background. So I'm going to press it on there. It's now identified it. I'm going to just shift it a little bit in, and I'm going to click Search. And what you'll see is it starts tracking the ball automatically. Uh, sometimes it gets a little bit stuck. Then in that case, what you'll need to do uh, is to press and hold the shift key and then just press where the object actually uh, is. And then it should be able to track it continuously from there. And I'll just press a few more buttons. Uh, eventually you'll be able to pick it up quite nicely again. Accept that. There we go. Keep accepting it. And uh, I'm just going to go back a frame over here. So it's got the object there. I'm going to go forward one frame. Just press Shift and the button. Shift and the button one more time. And then we're going to close it. So again, now if you look at your graphs, uh, it should give you some really nice clean data. It does a fairly good job of, of tracking the objects. And like I said, sometimes it gets stuck um, and then you just have to fix it up a bit. I find it's easier to learn by just manually tracking through the whole time. Uh, hopefully that's made sense. Um, best of luck.